this is a prophetic warning i'm going to be putting out with immediate effect uh the lord just got done having me write this down so please make sure you guys take this warning back to the lord pray over it in the name of jesus okay now in this context i believe babylon is the united states um i mean from everything being read it just points to the united states babylon is fallen okay so we're gonna be in revelations chapter 18 um the only part of revelation chapter 18 that we will be reading word for word together would be verse 23 and 24 okay fallen fallen is babylon the grave for her sins have piled up to heaven and god has remembered her crimes death mourning and fire will overtake her famine plague death warn mourning will overtake her woe woe O great city dressed in fine linen purple and scarlet and glittering with gold precious stones and pearls in one hour such great wealth has been brought to ruin woe O great city where all who had ships on the sea became rich through her wealth in one hour she has been brought down every time it is mentioned in one hour that Babylon has been brought down. I see that as suddenly, suddenly. It's going to happen so suddenly. Y'all know time with God and our time is totally different. So one hour to us can be like, okay, it's not happening. It's been an hour. But no, because a thousand years to God is one day for us. So imagine how fast God is saying this will happen, okay? Rejoice over her, O heaven. Rejoice, saints and apostles and prophets, for God has judged her for the way she treated you. Okay? A lot of people in the U.S. have become wealthy through the U.S. It says it right here. Those who had ships on the sea became rich through her wealth. In one hour, she has been brought down. So yes, a lot of people have become real wealthy uh, through the wealth that the United States already has, okay? Let's read Revelation chapter 18, verse 23 to 24. That's what we're going to be reading. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorcerers, by magic, were all nations deceived. The U.S. uses so much magic, so much witchcraft, bro. It's just well hidden and well packaged in a way that it's easily decept you can easily be deceived. And it says it right here. For by thy sorcerers, by thy magic, were all nations deceived. Yes, because yeah, they use witchcraft in Africa too, but that is so obvious, the witchcraft in Africa. It's a little too obvious, like, come on. <laughs> Verse 24, and in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. These people in the US, the ones that the Lord is targeting is talking about, oh wow, I just got a revelation. But the one that the Lord is talking about in this instance, it, he is discussing um, innocent blood that has been shed, the saints, the prophets. He's talking about innocent blood that has been shed due to the nonsense that happens here in Babylon in the U.S., also known as, okay? Now, the revelation the Lord gave me, so a couple, earlier this week, a couple days ago, the Lord showed me a big hat, hat like Abraham Lincoln's kind of hat. In the middle of this hat was a flag, a flag. And immediately I already knew he was talking about leadership. He was talking about presidency. He's talking about, you know, up there, people, people that are the one leading stuff. Okay. Definitely talking about that. Now, mm, 
um what he's saying here is that a lot of these things that are happening is from the leaders at the top they be the main one leading people into deception leading people astray deceiving people you guys this is ridiculous i'm about to read revelation chapter 19 on my own i pray that y'all take this message back to the lord most high in prayer um this also reminds me of when the lord showed me a man it was initially a woman and the woman turned into a man and then the man had a hook in his left hand and there's somewhere in scripture that mentions and i'll put it on the screen that mentioned how god would take a book and through the jaw of these people my god i don't know if he was talking about um babylon but i'll put it on the screen with correction and everything but I've also been reminded to mention this to you guys. How could you forget God if you're always speaking to God, if you're always communing with God? When you have a friend in real life, because mind you, God is a friend in real life. The only difference is we cannot see him. But when you have a friend in real life and that friend does not reach out to you every day, and then that friend randomly hits you up on some, oh, do me this favor. You're not going to immediately do this favor because it's going to give, oh, you're only hitting me up because I have something that you need or you need something from me. That's why you're reaching out to me. And we shouldn't make our relationship with God like that. Or maybe you have a friend who just never hits you up. Will you remember this friend? You're going to forget this friend. So when it comes to God, you, there's no way on this planet earth that you can forget God if you keep communing with him on a daily basis. If you make communing with him a priority. And people think communing with God has to be you sit down, read your Bible and, and pray. Which yes, yes it can be because most times I'm seated at my desk and I'm, you know, reading my Bible, reading my daily devotional, writing things down, taking notes. Or I'm doing that same exact thing or in my bed for a different position or location. But that does not mean I stop communing with God. I mean, at this point where in my walk, it doesn't even feel right. When I miss time with God, it feels so wrong. It feels like something, something is missing. Okay, like usually I would love to do and read my Bible, my do my devotional at 12 midnight. But last night I was... I was not tired, okay? So I said, okay, Lord, after morning prayer with my family this morning, I'll do my devotional in the morning. And that's how I sat here and God started pouring out a prophetic warning upon my head. So we have to understand that there's no way you can forget God if you keep in communion with him. It does not have to be a sit down situation. It can also be throughout your day, you're playing praise and worship in your car, you're Thanking him for everything that's going on. Thanking him as you're about to eat. Thank him as you're buying gas. Thank him as you're in the shower. Thank him as you're brushing your teeth. Praise him. Worship him. Play your Bi the Bible app. Listen to the Bible app as you're driving. Listen to the Bible app as you're lotioning up. As you're getting dressed in the morning. Soak in his presence. People think it's, it has to be this structured, sit down. No, a lot of times you are communing with God when you're soaking in his presence by keeping him on this main cycle. Like he's your friend. He's your friend. When you're about to go out, girls, ladies, y'all can't tell me y'all don't do this. When y'all have friends, right? You hit up your friend. Y'all know y'all about to go out somewhere. You hit up your friend. Hey girl, what you wearing? What are you going to wear? So that way we come out with, you know, kind of the same type of vibe. You know what I mean? Same thing with God. When you're getting dressed, you ask God, Lord, what should I wear? He tells us what to wear because his, his creativity is beyond. Like, he will make you look so bright, so, mm, so good. Commune with him over everything, over everything. Lord, what should I do today? Lord, how should I spend my money? Lord, guide me, oh God, as I drive to work today. Like, literally soak, literal soak, Okay. That's exactly what was placed on my heart. Soak, 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 soak. Sing love songs for your God. Come on, y'all. 
I pray that you will be able to understand what I'm trying to say and you will actually use it effectively. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hold on, because I just have to say this part. So y'all have to understand, because after reading Revelation chapter 18 and starting in 19, God is a just God. People probably like, oh my gosh, if he loves us so much, why would he destroy us? He loves you, but not the sin. And because you're attaching yourself to this sin and you're not allowing yourself to let go of this sin after the multiple warnings and the multiple repent and the multiple get it togethers and you still didn't listen after the multiple of it well you have left him no choice what do you think god is gonna do like score him up in his little in this little corner for you no he has warned you he's told you he 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 he's, he screams it through his prophets his apostles his saints he screams it he lets you know he is a just god it says it here, Revelation chapter 19, verse 2. For true and righteous are his judgment. For he had judged the great whore who did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. These people that are getting this type of the God, the Lord's judgment, the Lord's true and righteous and just, just judgment, they did something. Yes, we are born sinners, but if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and repent and turn from your sin, how can you? How can he save you? You're attaching yourself to sin. You got sin rubbed all over you, and you're still not turning from it. You're making this sin a lifestyle. You're not realizing how imperfect we are, that we are perfect through Christ Jesus. You claim you accept Jesus, but half the time, your actions tell us otherwise. You will know them by their fruit. And because God is a just God, he has to give a just judgment. Okay? Like, I can literally hear it through the screen. People saying, oh, this God that so-called loves us so much. How can he be destroying? No. Baby, he's only destroying those who literally have evil intentions towards innocent people. Who have manip manipulative uh, tactics who deceive, you know, who manipulate, who do magic and sorcery against innocent people, who tell people one thing, but truly it's the other. Editing Wola here. I don't know why my mind went blank when I was trying to describe the people that God's wrath usually comes upon. So it's like pedophiles, rapists, liars, thieves, um, literally murderers, like these people who have no remorse for the evil that they do. And they do it on other people and mostly innocent people and a lot of times children. And that's what I was trying to ex ex explain in the video. But for some reason, my mind literally went blank when it came to describing these evil doers and the Lord brought it back to my attention today as I'm watching YouTube. Um, so that's why I was like, let me come up on here and correct it real quick so that you guys know that God doesn't just punish. He's a righteous judge. He does it because these people did wrong and they must, you know, suffer the consequences. And just that's how just that how that goes. OK, like this is like this is that's demonic. That's what God's judgment is on. That's what God is judging. I pray y'all understand. Y'all make sure y'all take this message back to God, but I pray for you that you will be set apart, that as not as many fall by your right side, you will not fall in the mighty name of Jesus. You will see this happening left and right, but it will not harm you. It will not touch you in the name of Jesus. I build the fire of the Holy Spirit around about you now in the name of Jesus. And I use you under the sound of my voice as a point of contact for your loved ones, oh God. I pray the protection and fresh anointing over your altar, over your relationship with the Lord and Savior, over your relationship with the Master. And I pray that the Lord will continue to reveal the things and tactics of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be set apart. You will not be led astray. You will not be deceived. In the mighty name of Jesus, I cover you in the blood of Jesus. You are covered. 
You are covered. You are covered. In Jesus' glorious mighty name, pray. Amen. God bless you all as you obey in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.